NixOS might be the greatest invention of mankind, and I'm going to tell you why and what to do about it. I'm Steve, and you're watching Page Key, where we take back tech because our world is increasingly complex and always dependent on computers. So for you to not get taken advantage of, it's important to be learning about computers constantly and figuring out how to use them more effectively. So you may be wondering, why NixOS? Well, first of all, it is declarative. That means you can take this tiny little config file, declare everything that you want to exist about your system, which packages to install that stuff. And in this tiny little config file, you apply it, it gets expanded out across the whole system, and you don't have to place little files in all these different places. Based on your config, it just ends up where it needs to be. Another cool thing is the dependency graph that is kind of built into Nix, from what I can tell. It seems like it can basically solve all the way back to the source code of everything that you need, uh, exactly which dependencies need to be included. That's great because you can get minimal builds, so it'll just pull in what you need. If you install Build Essential on Ubuntu, it's going to install probably 100 packages. On Nix, I'm pretty sure there's a way to just get exactly what you need, and you can have very small, focused builds. And I've noticed this in my own experience of using Nix OS is if you check system D timers, the things set up on the system, if you check PS when X is not running, there's no dis display running or anything, there's just a lot less going on. It's very minimal from what I can tell. I'm a beginner to this, so I don't know that much about it, but it does seem to be a minimal system and just what you declare, which is great. And a final benefit before we get into the more technical side of things is development shells. So if you need a Python shell or a Rust shell, you don't necessarily have to install Python 3 system-wide. Instead, you define a little shell.nix file, or there's a way to do it with Nix Flakes too, and you just run that file and you get a development shell. So that's good because you don't have to install Python the hard way. You can switch from 3.11 to 3.10 very easily. And also if you have a team of people working together, it's a good way to guarantee everyone's on the same level playing field, same build environment, same version of Python or Rust or whatever you're using. So I think that's a huge advantage. So I hope you liked this little intro. I'm experimenting a little bit. Let's get into the technical side. How do we use Nix today? How do we get it on our system? And what have I found out in the past week of playing around with Nix? I'll say that I heard about Nix a long time ago and tried to get it to work, but I couldn't. But now I got it working, actually. So let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, full disclosure, here's my whole plan for this video. I just told you why NixOS is cool. So now I'm gonna tell you how to use it. We're gonna start by installing it from an ISO onto a new computer. I'm gonna show you how to change the config in a very basic way. Once we know how to change the config, it's all installed. We will learn how to control our config using Git. We'll use Home Manager for aliases and other things that you would have put in dot .files before. And then we'll look at how to use shells for programming languages, and that's probably enough. So let's jump into how to install from ISO. So if you just search NixOS and then you click on the first result, you can go to download. And then up here is how to install Nix. We want NixOS. So you're gonna download the graphical image. You might be tempted to use the minimal one, but keep in mind, this is just running NixOS. There's no real installer included that I could tell. You have to figure it out yourself. Maybe there is a text installer, but I couldn't figure it out. I would recommend use the graphical one and you can switch it to non-graphical if you want very easily through the config file. Once the download's complete, you can open with Disk Image Writer on Linux and select not your main hard drive, but a flash drive that you've plugged in and hit Start Restoring, and that'll put it onto the flash drive so you can boot from it. Once you got that trusty USB with Nixos burned to it, just plug it into the USB drive of whatever you're trying to install Nixos on. In this case, I'm using a Nuke, and then you can boot it, and then whatever you have to press to get into the boot menu do that. So I'm not sure if it's escape F12 or delete, but I'm going to hit all of them while I boot this guy. There we go. We ended up in the BIOS. So we'll go to boot and look for something like USB flash disk or whatever it is. Boot from that drive. Actually it might be in save and exit. Yeah. Now we can select just this one time, boot from that flash disk. Don't update the default. And then we'll just go with the default Nix OS installer there. Once it's done, you'll see this little view and it'll be complaining if it's not connected to power or the internet. The internet's the important one. To get connected to Wi-Fi, just go up here to Wi-Fi and then click this drop down and select your Wi-Fi from there. Enter the password and you should be good to go. Once you select the Wi-Fi, it should let you hit next. You can select your time zone and hit next again. 
and I pretty much keep these defaults. Now enter a username and password, and then also a password for your admin account. So for me, it'll be Steve. I'll put all those passwords in, and then I'll hit next. And now you can select your desktop environment. I've found that the default is very pretty, so I like that. I'm gonna keep that. I check allow on free software, and then you're gonna have some options as to how you wanna install this. If you can install alongside, that's nice because you don't wipe what's already there. You can replace it. You can erase the whole thing. Um, sometimes you might not have this option depending on how your setup is. So if you have to do it manually, just make sure that you have a few things. So you're gonna wanna make a, here we can do it. If you select manual, my recommendation would be start with no partitions, add a one gigabyte, 1024 megabyte, FAT32, the mount point will be slash boot. You can also call it boot. Check the boot box, hit okay. And then the rest of it, we're gonna make ext4, we're gonna call the mount point slash, and we're gonna call this root. And you can check the root box, hit okay. So that should be enough to get you started with Nix OS. If you hit next, and it'll detect uh, basically what you're doing. So there are a lot of ways you could partition it, but for me, the one gig and then the rest of it for your root partition seems to be the simplest way. I know it's probably not the most efficient in terms of read writes or whatever. You can get fancy with it, do your own research, but if you have to manually partition, you can do this. Otherwise, I would certainly use whatever um, Nixos recommends by replacing or installing alongside, let it do it for you. Either way, once you figure out how you wanna partition it, you can just hit install to get started. It should run, and then when it's done, you can boot into NixOS, and I'll show you what to do from there. So once you log into NixOS, you're going to be able to sudo nano slash etsy slash nixos slash configuration.nix because Vim won't be installed yet. So you'll have to use nano to edit that file. And we can take a look at that file right here in VS Code. Um, you can change the host name, you can change lots of things. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, most likely, is to go down here and change in your system packages, your installed packages. Uncomment Vim if you like Vim. Also add git, add VS Code if you would like, and add wget. That, that's my recommendation. Then you can save that file in nano, which if you're not familiar with nano, you hit Control O to save, Control X to exit out. Then, once you've saved that file, you can run this special command that you're gonna run a lot, sudo nixos rebuild switch. And that's going to take everything in this file and apply it to your system. So after you run this command, you should be able to use Vim and all of these other things that you've installed to get you started. So how are we going to configure this whole thing in Git? How do we keep track of things on nixos in Git? First of all, copy all of your nixos config files that were generated. So everything.nix into your new Git repo. Git init if you haven't already. So initialize that empty Git repository. Now you have these two files, um, but they're gonna get out of sync. If you edit these files, it doesn't change at the system level. So we're gonna change that by adding a install.bash script. Is there a better way to do this? Maybe, but this is how I like to do it. So the simplest possible way to do this, you don't have to remember the soft link commands, but sudo soft link force the current Nix files over into Etsy NixOS. So this will make it so that whenever you edit this file, it changes it in Etsy NixOS, and you don't have to worry about changing permissions of this file to root or whatever it is. And so if you run that, and then you check out Etsy NixOS, you'll see that light blue coloring. If you do AL, you'll see that they link right back into your configuration files in your Git repo. I also have a .git folder but that's not used. I was experimenting before I figured out the softlinks thing. So there's how you can control things with Git. So here's my current actual Nix config. Um, if you install Home Manager, this is going to give you a lot more control over your home area. So you don't have to change your entire system around. You can just change the home area for your one user. So if you just add this guy to your list, then you can run Home Manager init, and it's gonna generate some files in home slash config slash home manager. These guys you can copy into your Git repo, as I have here, and do the same thing with your install script. So you can also soft link your home manager stuff into your .config slash home manager folder. And then you can just change these in your Git repo and commit them and all that different stuff. And then all you have to do to apply them is home manager 
switch and it's going to apply the things in your home manager file. So why is this helpful? You can set your git config to use vim. You can set all sorts of aliases, which feel free to steal my git aliases if you want. I made some ones for switching too. I did NORS for Nixos rebuild switch, so I don't have to type that whole thing. And I did HMS, not Her Majesty's ship, but rather home manager switch. And then I Googled around and figured out how to add the control alt T that I'm used to from Ubuntu in as well. So yeah, that's basically all you need for home manager. Finally, one more thing you should be aware of is shells and how you can use them. So if you run nix shell, and I'm gonna pass it this python.nix file that you see here. I don't actually have Python installed on my system, but if I do that, I get Python 3.12. So outside of the shell, no Python. Inside the shell, yes, Python. So the first time it might take a little while to install, but then everything will be in your Nix tree somewhere. So the environment gets discarded, but everything it needs to regenerate it is in your Nix tree. So you can you can specify 3.11, 3.12, whatever version of Python you want, and pandas requests, whatever packages you want to be installed. And the same thing for Rust. So I don't have Rust C on my system, I don't have cargo, but if I do nix shell, rust.nix, it'll grab this guy, and I get Rust C, and I get cargo. So that's really cool. Just give everyone the same shell file, or there's a way to do this with Flakes too that might be even better. I'm just not familiar with it yet. Keep everyone on the same dev environment. So that's all I had in my master plan for this week. That's, I think, enough to get started. So thanks for watching. Obviously, I'm pretty new to this, but I'm trying to share what I've learned along the way. So I hope it was helpful to you. If you are a Nix purist, you know everything about Nix, and I messed something up, I apologize. Please let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to learn from what you know. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. See you next time.